Here's Johnny! Well, there you go. That was the 90th Academy Awards. I thought it was a pretty predictable ceremony. It was a safe ceremony overall. I felt like Jimmy Kimmel didn't really push any boundaries with his humor. Everyone was very respectful. Most, like pretty much all of the acceptance speeches were really on topic and Frances McDormand was a great way to finish the night off. I thought, think she really just, she's really incredible. And uh, yeah, I think that there wasn't too much upset. So why don't we just sit down now? I'm still kind of processing everything, by the way. I'm still processing all my thoughts and feelings and content. Let's be real for a second here. I actually didn't get to watch the entire ceremony. So I didn't watch it from start to finish like I had hoped that I would be able to. I was at work today because I am in the future. So when the Oscars stream in the West Coast for me in Australia, it is Monday lunchtime-ish, around lunchtime. And I was planning on live streaming from work, but unfortunately, you know how these things go. It just was quite a busy morning and I didn't actually get to start and flick the ceremony on until about, they think they'd already been a good 30 minutes into the ceremony. So then I started live streaming and from then on I was watching intermittently. I did get to watch here and there. I had it like playing on my second computer screen and I was like working and I kept looking over and I had one earphone in. If you follow me on Instagram, you would have been following all my Insta stories and keeping updated on that front. But you know, I will probably rewatch the highlights. I won't go back and sit down and watch the whole ceremony because it's one of the, those things that for me only feel right to do live. And in the moment, I'm not gonna sit back and watch an old award ceremony later on. Does that make sense? Anyway, I'll definitely watch the highlights. I'm interested in seeing Jimmy Kimmel's opening monologue. I heard that he played it pretty safe, but that he did touch a point, uh, touch upon every single topical point that was on trend. So he was like going through a checklist of everything that he had to talk about. He had to talk about Harvey Weinstein. He had to talk about the Me Too movement. He had to talk about, I don't know, sexual harassment and all those things that are very topical right now. So. Yeah, people were pretty okay with him overall as a host and I am too from what I saw. I think he's a really great host. My Oscar predictions. So I did pretty well overall in my Oscar ballot. I'm just like bringing up my um, video that I posted on the internet. So I'm totally accountable of all my predictions. So let me go into my video. I managed to pull off uh, 18 of the 24 categories correct, which I'm pretty sure is on par with the personal best for me because last year it might have been that I got 16 out of 24 and the year before might have been 17. I usually get 16, 17. I have gotten 18 in the past and this year again it was 18 out of 24, so very much to be expected, but I did get the best picture win, which was The Shape of Water. I felt that was the predictable choice. It would have been great to see Get Out, but there would have had to have been so many things involved for Get Out to have come and stolen the show and for us to have had another Moonlight situation, which there was not this year. Kind of sadly, I, I felt like I was waiting for like a big controversy. I was waiting for something big to happen. One of those big OMG moments for us all to tweet about. But uh, yeah, it was a pretty, pretty predictable kind of evening. I think that some of the bigger ones that got people talking were best short film in the animated category, Kobe Bryant took that one home and a lot of people were scratching their heads about that one. So he is the first NBA player to, or former NBA player to ever go on to win an Oscar. That is quite a big feat. I mean, I don't really have much else to say about it. I have not seen the short, but from what I hear, people are okay about it, but they don't really think that it's anything that special and possibly 
Oscar worthy. It's probably easier if I just go through my Oscar ballot a little bit clearer and just tell you the ones that I did get incorrect. And those were definitely all the short films across all of the short film categories. I did not get any of those. And I pretty much just told myself just not two days ago that if you can get the short film categories correct, that you are on your way to doing very well on your ballot because they're the ones that can really trip you up and they definitely tripped me up. So not only did I not get the Kobe Bryant film, Dear Basketball, but I did not get the short live action, which was A Silent Child. I've had picked Decalb Elementary. The other one I didn't get was Documentary Short Subject, which was Heaven is a traffic jam. I have to remember that. Heaven is a traffic jam on the 405 about mental illness, which looks really interesting. And I think that that's awesome that that one won that category, but I had picked Edith and Eddie. So incorrect on that one. And again, I did not do very well with the other documentary category, which was Documentary Feature. And that ended up being Icarus. And I had picked faces places i want to see what i said best film editing category i've left blank so i have yeah this is what it. tripped me up i was really torn between baby driver and dunkirk i would love to see, see? baby driver because just like the see i knew that i would love to have seen baby driver it. but i um, knew I that they were going to give it to dunkirk and how much that added to the story i'm gonna pick dunkirk only because I can actually like see maybe myself I talking jump. myself out know, of maybe Dunkirk. I could really do it. I, I would love it if it did. <laughs> Shall I just like do it? Shall I just go out on a limb and just say baby driver? <gasps> Done. No, baby driver. I I just it doesn't. It's really funny watching back and seeing the cogs ticking in my brain as I talk myself and rationalize away things which I know not to be true. That's probably the main one. The rest I was either unsure about because I hadn't seen the short films or the documentaries or the best original uh, song being Coco's Remember Me. Um, I just didn't see that one coming. I thought that the masses would win and it would go to This Is Me. So that one, best film editing, is the one where I actually knew what the favorite was and bet against the odds. I was tweeting quite a bit. Actually, what were some of my tweets? Let me tell you some of the things that I was obviously quite interested about as they were unfolding. I didn't get to watch the red carpet at the beginning, but I did see Nicole Kidman's outfit and I tweeted, oh my God, I was definitely quite enchanted by her dress. I thought that was absolutely beautiful. Um, but yeah, you could see originally I didn't get to tune in for the Oscars uh, because work was busy and I was definitely disappointed. So that's what that tweet there is about. And then I was talking about Kobe Bryant. See, I said, wow, Kobe Bryant, really, I really need to see D basketball. Oh my God. If the boss baby wins right now, that's it. I'm out. I knew the boss baby had no chance of winning. Of course it was Coco that was that had stolen everyone's hearts and stolen the show, but I just had to make myself very clear on the point that I am not impressed at all impressed the boss baby was even nominated. I don't care if that makes me sound like a snob. That is my stance and I'm sticking with it. And then of course, the moment of the night for me was Frances McDormand winning for lead actress. I think that was just, I mean, it was definitely expected, no surprise there, but it was just fabulous to actually see it happen. And her acceptance speech was just wonderful. I said, I even quoted it. She said, look around, ladies and gentlemen, we all have stories we want to tell and projects we need financed. So I just really loved, she's got so, such presence, that woman. She really just inspires me. I also really liked all the Oscar montages this year. I felt like the tone was a little bit more... I don't know, a little bit more upbeat, maybe not so heavy handed with those like Oscar montages and full on uh, orchestral music that accompany them usually. And they're a bit, you know, just heavy handed. I felt like all the montages 
this year were fantastic. There was one looking back at all the Oscars, um, which I thought was just so great. And the other one, um, there was some few little like, what do you even call them, those montage things? When Ashley Judd, Annabella Shiora, if that's how you say her name, and Selma Hayek were on stage talking about the Oscar trailblazers, I felt like the montage and the clip reel that went together with that was just so inspiring. I, I really loved it. Kumal Ninjani, he is a funny dude. He said that some of his favorite movies are written by straight white guys about straight white guys and he loves them. Well now straight white guys, they can watch movies about him and they can relate to him. I mean, he's done it all his life. What a perfect way to phrase that. I freaking love it. Another presenter moment that I really enjoyed was Sandra Bullock coming out on stage. And at first she had a go at the lighting. You know, she said she loved the set, but the lighting was a little bit bright. If they could just turn the lighting down a little bit. And as the lights were dimming, she was like going, okay, now like I'm in my forties. Okay, now I'm 39, 38, 37. She's like, okay, now I'm 35. That's the sweet spot. I thought that was <laughs> really funny. Her just having a go at her herself um, and her age. I thought that was cute. And then she went on to present for best cinematography and say, here are the four male nominees and the one trailblazing woman. I thought that was really nice. That doesn't mean I wasn't over the moon pumped to see Roger Deakin win for best cinematography for Blade Runner 2049. So deserving, so deserving. This guy has waited so long for his Oscar and he got up on stage. I really liked his acceptance speech. He seems like a really cool dude I really liked how casually he just thanked his team around him like the crew that have been with him for 30 years as he's been on this incredible career of his yeah he just seems like an awesome guy thank you so much for watching guys thank you for hanging out with me for another year talking all things Oscars talking the best picture movies ranked from best to worst we talked about all my Oscar predictions and now we have wrapped up the night unfortunately I didn't have any like crazy reactions like I did last year when I heard about Moonlight winning. That was a shock not to be replicated this year. Make sure you tell me how you fared with your Oscar ballots. Leave me comments in the comments section down below. No cheating. Let me know how you went. Were there any surprises that you did not see coming? Any upsets that you were still very mad about? Let me know. Let's discuss. Don't forget to share with me the highlights as well so I can go and check out the bits that I missed because I will definitely do that and thank you for sharing another year of Oscar chats with me online we talked about the best pictures ranked from best to worst we talked about all my predictions I really love talking about the Oscars I don't know I just think it's a really nice time that all movie fans get together but not just movie fans like movie fans in the movie community but also like regular punters off the street. Like everyone has an opinion in the Oscars, whether they've seen all the movies or not. Everyone just gets really buzzed about movies and I find that really fun. That is it from me. I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.